I'm going to ask um, Larry Becker, Ellen Siegel, and Harlan Weissman to come up um, to the table. Uh, these are three board members who have been listening intently and are going to do um, uh, what may be almost an impossible task, but they're going to uh, report back to you on uh, uh, what they heard today. And part of the reason is just um, to uh, indicate to you that we're listening and, and that we are capable of hearing. Uh, and part of it is to, in case you uh, don't hear um, us, uh, don't get the idea that we got the message or some of the messages, let us know. So first, um, right here to my immediate left is Mr. Larry Becker. Larry is a Director of Strategic Partnerships and Alliances for Xerox Corporation in Rochester, New York. Uh, he is responsible for global HR vendor optimization within Xerox. And he's also chairman of uh, the Plan Administration Committee for um, Xerox's ERISA plans. Um, Larry serves on our um, Finance Administration and Audit Committee on the board and is just one of the reasons that we stay in good shape is that Larry and his colleagues on that committee um, um, look after us from an administrative point of view, give us outstanding advice and hands-on help. Um, the, uh, in, the, in the middle is Dr. Harlan Weissman. Harlan is a cardiologist and he's a Chief Science and Technology Officer uh, um, for Medical Devices and Diagnostics for Johnson & Johnson in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, Harlan is um, responsible for guiding uh, Johnson & Johnson's Medical Devices and Diagnostics Group Global Scientific Medical and Regulatory Strategies and um, uh, on the PCORI board. Harlan sits on the uh, Communications Outreach and Engagement Committee. Um, and uh, to my far left is Ellen Siegel. Ellen is chair and founder of Friends of Cancer Research, a uh, cancer research think tank and advocacy organization based here in Washington, D.C. Uh, during the uh, last 20 years, Ellen has been an advocate for finding new and better treatments for patients through advancing science and research. And I'll say of Ellen that uh, if she is still what you could call a lay person, she is maybe the most knowledgeable lay person on the planet on how research uh, progresses and advances, and, and particularly in the area of cancer research. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to Larry. Okay, to Larry. And um, I'm sure they'll um, handle it ably for the next 25 minutes, thanks. So thank you very, very much. Uh, we had hundreds of people in the room we had hundreds of people on the phone. We had dozens upon dozens of comments, and that was very, very important to us. So I wanted to first take a moment to thank everybody here and on the phone uh, for your important in input into our process. Um, with that process, you know, it's, a, it's a privilege to represent each and every one of you on this board. Um, and each of the 21 of us and the 16 methodology committee members take this very, very seriously as an important uh, aspect of, of what we do and and, uh, and and we're also thankful by the way to our companies for allowing us to take the time uh, to be able to do this. Um, so we're going to summarize the comments that we heard. Um, we obviously spent several hours doing that so we're going to hit the high points uh, on that. Um, the information that you provided us today, um, this is a beginning um, as Harlan talked about, a beginning to the agenda, a beginning to uh, our priorities. Uh, we will take this, if, if you can get on the web now, you'll see that we've already posted, for example, what Harlan did uh, this morning. Uh, we'll continue to post that. If you were able to, uh, uh, if your comments are in writing and you want to submit those to us, we'll, we will take those. If you want to get on the web and add more comments, uh, we'll take those. If you want to uh, transcribe what you spoke today, we will take those. It's all very important. It all gets used. It all forms uh, the kinds of things that uh, we will do as, as, uh, as PCORI evolves. So with that, I'm going to um, ask my uh, Carl colleague Harlan uh, to uh, summarize the major uh, points that we heard, and then um, Ellen and I will comment on, on each of those uh, pieces. Thanks, Larry. And, and for the people uh, not in the room, um, I'm Harlan Weissman, um, also known as Harlan Number Two, not to be confused with Harlan Krumholtz, Harlan Number One. Um, I heard ten, what I think were ten common themes 
um, that seem to be without controversy among all the comments that we heard from the panels um, as well as the people giving us public comments. The first is um, patient-centeredness and patient engagement. Hearing the patient's voice and opening the door for their active direct involvement in patient-centered outcomes research. The next one was an acknowledgement, um, which is why I think all of us are here, that there's a need for change. Um, with few exceptions, um, healthcare in America doesn't seem to work well. And we heard that over and over again. Uh, patients, their caregivers, clinicians are confused about what to do in the specific setting of that individual's care. They don't always know where to turn to for knowledge, to get trusting, uh, trusted information, to help them make high quality decisions about their care, whether that is about prevention of disease or treatment of disease or diagnosis of disease. Um, the third major theme was around transparency and openness. Um, op transparency and openness in about all aspects of what PCORI is going to do, as well as transparency and openness in the healthcare system. I think my colleagues will talk more um, specifically about some of the areas we got advice in that regard. Another area was about participation of all stakeholders all along the way of PCORI's work, from the very beginning in terms of national priorities, um, and setting of the research agenda through the conduct of the research and the reporting of the research. Um, another theme was around real-world um, healthcare, um, not off in a laboratory somewhere, not in, um, in a research center, but something that was usable um, at the point of care. Um, people use the words real-world, um, real-use, community-based. Um, another theme was that our research should be, utilize rigorous science and rigorous methods. Communications and dissemination of information was another theme that um, all the participants um, talked about. There seemed to be no uh, disagreement that communications would be very important. And that would include um, dissemination, teaching, the education, of patients about various aspects of their health care, the um, teaching and education, communication to clinicians, to researchers, to policymakers, payers, regulators, and other stakeholders. Um, the eighth theme was um, the need for uh, understanding drivers of behavioral change. Um, if there is a need for change, um, or a transformation needed in healthcare, that means that we need to change behaviors, behaviors of patients, behaviors of um, clinicians, and behaviors of all the other participants in healthcare delivery. Um, another area was that whatever we do, whatever the research is, that it must result in actionable results that can make an impact. And finally, and very importantly, and somewhat related to a couple of the other themes, was the need for collaborations and partnerships, again, all along the way of the PCORI uh, research process. Ellen? So thank you. My colleagues did a really good job in summarizing, so I want to add a little bit to it. Um, first of all, I think there is an enormous belief in the value of PCORI and what PCORI can do and the differentiation between PCORI and what exists today. Uh, one thing that I heard, and it's loud and clear, and I happen to believe there is not one person or one group that can speak for all patients. We're all different. We all have different values, different needs, patients and caregivers, and we have to be very careful because the needs of patients at different stages are very different and we have to be very careful that we get out there into the real world and deal with real patients and that's incredibly important and their care, uh, caregivers and we have to be careful not to be caught in a trap of having one group speak for all patients. Uh, I come from the cancer community, we probably have a thousand patient groups and each one with a different agenda so we have to be very careful about that. Um, 
uh, the day was started with my friend and colleague Otis Brawley talking about the belief in science. And that's important because we have to be science driven, but we also have to understand the limitations of knowledge and what we know and what we don't know, and that's important, and what is scientifically driven, because that is a value that we have. Um, we heard the value of partnership. There's an, ex an, a, an enormous infrastructure out there with the NIH and ARC, and what um, companies are doing, and um, there's a huge infrastructure. We're not here to start all over again. We're here to listen to them, to work with them, and to partner with them. I don't care how much we're funded. We couldn't possibly do it without the partnership and the input from what's out there and having this driven by patients. Um, I think we're driven, we've been told, and this is something I think we're going to have to f figure out, um, that we should do things that are high impact evidence-driven, you know, where there are gaps. I mean, those are big issues. Do we do 10 important things, five important things, or 100 things? So those are things that we have to come to grips with. Um, people did uh, state actionable results. It's something I feel very strongly about. To be of value, we have to be of value to patients. We have to do meaningful research for them that they can gain from and they can um, really benefit from. Uh, some overarching themes were comorbid conditions. We heard a lot about that today. That's really important because when patients get a disease, and whether it's cancer or Alzheimer's, they're likely to have multiple other diseases, and we have to understand what that means and how to really customize our research for those needs. Um, there was some discussion on end-of-life issues. Those are really important choices, information for patients. Um, treatment adherence is something we heard about today. Very important because that gets to behavioral change and adherence to protocols that often really don't happen today. So PCORI can do a lot by engaging parent, uh, patients on that. We heard a lot about the issues and the complexities of mental illness and, and, and that disease and how we can help a very heterogeneous community and what should be done and how to individually help these groups are enormously important and those are comorbid conditions. We discussed quality of life issues, incredibly important. We have to define what they mean, but they're very, very important to patients. And um, there, were a, a, there was an enormous amount to build on, so we heard a lot, and um, now we have to really understand what we're going to do with this information. And we heard a great deal about the patient, but what, as we heard about the patient from all the different points of view expressed in the room, what I think people were describing, you know, what I heard them describe, was a team-based model, where it's really about a lot of people in the healthcare system that all have to work together and have to put our, our best thoughts and our best creativity together to make it better for patients, so that we put patients um, at the center and take them out of the middle. So that's one of the things that I, that I heard from this. The other thing that I heard was that there's a fair amount of um, uh, information out there that uh, people shouldn't do. I heard that in the morning. But what I also heard was sort of the reverse of that. And how do we get um, the information to the patients at the point in the time when they need it for what they and what they are experiencing and what, what's happening to them? And how do we most efficiently disseminate the kind of information that we hope to create? directly to the patient, their caregiver, their, their physicians, their providers of all kinds, um, so that we can effectively and efficiently get them the kind of care that, that all of us spend our lives trying to develop, create, and, and make sure that you know, our, our loved ones get um, the best of what's out there. And as Gene Washington, our chair, always says, healthcare is our future, every one of us. And so this is really about all of us. I'd, I'd um, like to supplement, since I got the chance to um, talk in generalities, uh, there were a couple other um, specific things that I heard. Um, um, two, two contrasts, um, sets of contrasts. The first one was around personalized medicine. We heard the term personalized medicine a few times today and the importance of personalized medicine, but we heard different definitions of it. On the one hand, we had people talking about the need for 
um, the use, uh, better use of um, diagnostic tools, including imaging, um, blood tests, uh, genomics, molecular diagnostics, to help identify which therapies will work in which patients. But we heard a different definition of um, personalized medicine, and that was to really understand the um, specific characteristics, the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the social, the economic conditions of an individual, um, the preferences, the values, um, that will help um, determine um, which choices might be relevant, but also the success of specific therapies. Um, another sort of dichotomy of definitions uh, that um, uh, people talked about was um, an urging for us to get more specific than we have in general. But there was a group of um, uh, people who advocated strongly that we go after the top three or the top four or the top five chronic diseases that have high cost, high impact, and high volume within the healthcare system. But there were other voices that talked about the need for us to get specific, but do not forget about the rare diseases, the ones that may not be in a um, societal level producing high costs or, whole, or, or high volume um, or have high impact, but on an individual basis um, to the individual who has that rare disease, to their family, to their caregivers, has a big impact um, for them. So this is, uh, those two things I think we need to sort out as uh, we go forward. And this, this um, um, observation of talking about the same thing but meaning two different things is something that I think the board has to grapple with as we, as, um, we move forward. Um, a, a third theme that I thought was important that we heard over and over again um, related to some of the other things we heard was the, the value of uh, new technologies in information management, health informatics, health information systems. Um, people talked about uh, electronic medical records. Other people talked about personalized health records. Other people talked about the use of mobile technologies in helping patients manage their own health care. Um, we're clearly um, facing probably a revolution based on uh, these new technologies that will change healthcare and make healthcare become more information based, but exactly how we take all these factors that people brought up to us and what role we play in building, helping to build the infrastructure around those, uh, the use of these large databases. Um, people talked about registries as well as claims databases, how this all comes into fold and how we do. Um, important inputs to us today, but we'll have to take into consideration as we work towards um, um, the next step of, um, or the next generation of the national priorities and research agenda. So I, I also want to go back to something that both Perry and Cindy said and others, and that's don't check a box patient. We have to be really careful about that because patients come in all sizes, shapes, varieties, and real patients that are suffering from disease need to be included, and we can't just call ourselves patient-centered. We really have to be patient-centered, and that means in all aspects of our research we have to be different. We have to really include a, a broad spectrum of patients in our initiatives, in our research, and, um, and trying to understand what those conditions are like at the point of care. So that's going to be a huge challenge for us because I don't think anybody can speak for all patients. But we're going to have to really do a better job of that. And all of us, uh, I do this all the time, and I know Cindy and others sit on panels, and we are the patient representative, and we all know what that means. You're checking a box, and we are, are committed, and I think all of us here, not just me, but all of us at Picori are really committed to doing our research differently and really making sure that that has real value. So it's um, something we heard a lot um, about today. We did also hear 
you know, about other issues, um, registries, regist being a re uh, the registry of all registries. So there's a whole lot of, inf of things that we can do there. We heard about arthritis, so we heard a lot. I, I do want to note that today we didn't hear from, uh, although we have in the past, other disease groups that I think are important. We didn't hear a lot from Alzheimer's, um, not a whole lot from diabetes or juvenile diabetes, so those are things we really have to look at also. And we did hear about autoimmune and rare disease, and I believe in our charter we do have a mandate to look at rare diseases as well, and that's important. And I know I have a husband suffering from a rare disease, so I'm very interested in that. So we have a huge amount that we um, have heard, and we heard and to do. So I wanted to say thank you once again uh, for everybody who is here, people who are on the phone. This is very important to us. I want to say that again. I can't emphasize that enough, uh, that as you have thoughts, ideas, uh, information that you want to share with us, info at pcori.com is, is where you can write to us. Pcori.com is, uh, uh, pcori.org, I'm sorry, is where you can uh, write to us and follow us. Um, and that's very important. So for uh, my fellow board members, for Joe, for Ann, uh, wanted to say thank you. I think Joe wants to come up now and, uh, and summarize the day for us. So thank you. Well, uh, you guys did a perfect job of summarizing. I had taken notes and you hit <coughs> every one of them really. Um, I'm not going to even try to add on to that, except to just say that, that all of you here now have a better glimpse of um, what the PCORI board and staff and methodology committee talk about and think about the visions, the visions that we see, the choices that we face. There obviously are some choices in some directions. Um, uh, we're definitely much better informed and enriched by the day, and I hope that you all have a, a better picture of what, um, um, you know, the kinds of issues we're thinking about as we envision the next seven to eight years. Um, now that you've seen this um, event today and experienced it, you're in a better position even than you were before you got here to go to our website and give us more of your thoughts. So let me invite you one more time to do that. And, and the last thing I'll say is that as I looked out across the room today, it often felt to me like there actually was a bit of a, of a patient, clinician, provider, payer, uh, researcher, community uh, forming here. And um, we've had such a good time today. I think we're going to be doing much more of this and hope that com community strengthens over time. Thank you again.